2021 is finally upon us, thank God, and that means a new slate of JRPGs to look forward to. This year is loaded with a ton of sequels, but quite a few have been hotly anticipated for a long time, so I'm sure we'll all be fine with that. Now this list is only games that have been confirmed for at least a 2021 release window, and I won't be including games that might come out this year like Final Fantasy 16. Also be sure to check the upload date in case something gets announced or a particular game gets a specific date after this video comes out. Definitely let me know in the comments which JRPGs you're most excited for, and if you're not already, be sure to subscribe for more videos on these games all throughout 2021 and beyond. The first JRPG to launch in 2021 is Atelier Ryza 2, Lost Legends, and The Secret Fairy. The original was such a huge hit for developer Gus that they decided to make this the first numbered sequel in the Atelier series in over a decade. Ryza 2 picks up three years after the first game, once again following Ryza and her friends on another adventure. They find themselves in a brand new city seeking to explore ancient ruins. Familiar elements like alchemy and a fast-paced turn-based combat system return as well with slight variations. There's even new abilities like jumping and swimming to create an even greater sense of exploration. If you are a fan of the original, Atelier Ryza 2 seems to be more of the same but improved upon in a number of small ways. And honestly, that sounds alright to me. In Ease 9 Monstrum Knox, Adol Christian once again finds himself wrapped up in another adventure, this time in a prison city. Through the game you'll seek to uncover the secrets of a curse and the prison itself. Gameplay remains largely the same from Ease 8, including a three-party system in combat, the ability to swap to different characters on the fly, properly timing your dodges and blocks, and much more. New in Ease 9 are gifts. Unique abilities that each character possesses that help you traverse the world. Some of these include gliding, breaking walls, and running up buildings. If you've enjoyed past Ease games or simply enjoy a good action RPG, then Ease 9 looks to be a game you shouldn't miss. Two of the most difficult and celebrated games of the last generation, Neo and Neo 2, make their way to PS5 in the Neo Collection. For the uninitiated, the Neo series is very inspired by the Dark Souls series, with tough as nails gameplay and satisfying combat. It also takes place in feudal Japan, a setting that up until recently was grossly underrepresented in gaming. The PS5 version ups the resolution to 4K and the frame rate to 120 frames per second. This is something that was really only possible on PCs, so it's really cool to see an action game of Neo's caliber get this type of performance bump. You'll also get a free upgrade for Neo 2 if you already own it, so if you're considering playing it on PS5, maybe think about buying it cheap on PS4 and then getting the free upgrade. One game I think that's going to fly under a lot of people's radars but could end up being really neat is Fallen Legion Revenants. The premise is that Earth is plagued by hordes of monsters with Earth's last bastion, Welkin Castle, sitting safely among the clouds. Lucian, a crafty politician, discovers an ancient book that tells of exemplars, powerful weapons that can become sentient soldiers. Lucian teams up with a woman named Rowena to fight back the plague. The combat is a fast-paced strategy system, very reminiscent of Valkyrie Profile. You'll have to issue commands at just the right time to decimate foes. There also appears to be a choice system that can affect the way the story plays out. Fallen Legion Revenant certainly doesn't have the biggest budget, but for those who like to seek out hidden gems, this one might be for you. At first glance, Persona 5 Strikers seems like another warrior-style spin-off, and while it definitely has its warrior's roots, there's more to it than you might expect. Strikers is actually more of a true sequel than a spin-off with the story continuing after Persona 5. This also plays more like Persona 5 than you might expect with plenty of story and exploring. Of course, the combat is a typical Warriors game affair where you'll mow down hundreds of enemies with your Phantom Thief companions. Developer Omega Force worked really close with Atlas to carry out the stylish look of the original game fans came to love from the stylish menus, attacks, and even hand-drawn cutscenes. Your mileage will definitely vary with a Warriors-style game depending on the franchise, but if you love Persona 5, then this is one you shouldn't miss. The Bravely Default series makes its home console debut with Bravely Default 2. This entry introduces a new world and cast of characters for players to fall in love with, while also including mechanics that made the series popular in the first place. The series' signature turn-based combat returns, giving you the ability to either store up turns for later or perform multiple actions in the same turn. The combat is enhanced even further with a Final Fantasy-inspired job system. Each character is assigned a job and can learn various abilities the more they fight with that equipped job. The fun part is trying out a variety of different jobs and mixing and matching abilities to create your ultimate party. The music is also absolutely fantastic, with a battle theme to get you excited and melodic town themes to set the mood perfectly. If you're a fan of classic JRPGs, then Bravely Default 2 is definitely a game to keep your eye on. Yakuza Like a Dragon already released last year, but finally makes its way to PS5 on March 2nd. For the uninitiated, Yakuza Like a Dragon breaks series conventions not only with a new turn-based combat system, but also with a new protagonist, Ichiban Kasuga. Ichiban is loyal, upbeat, if not a little naive. Despite Majima and Kazuma's immense popularity, fans fell in love with Ichiban and he's quickly become just as popular. If you want to know more about Like a Dragon, I actually have a full review on this channel that I'll link in the description, and if you are patient enough to wait for the PS5 release, you'll be rewarded with better resolution and frame rate, making this the premier way to experience the game. 
It wouldn't be another year of JRPGs without our friends at Idea Factory dropping another Neptunia game. The first of two Neptunia games dropping in 2021 is Neptunia Virtual Stars. The story in this game is as ridiculous as ever. The planet Emote is faced with extinction from content destroyers known as Antes. The digital goddess of Emote, Farah, puts out a distress signal in hopes of finding allies to save the world. Of course, our girls Neptune and company come to the rescue, along with VTuber stars me and you. Gameplay seems to mainly consist of dungeon crawling with a mix of melee and third-person shooter mechanics. For those that fell down the VTuber rabbit hole last year, you'll be glad to hear that popular VTubers like Aqua, Fubuki, and Corone of Hololive will be making appearances in the game along with dozens of others. Neptunia Virtual Stars lands on PS4 March 2nd and Steam on March 29th. One of the more intriguing JRPGs this year is Nier Replicant. The original Nier had two versions, Nier Gestalt and Nier Replicant. The West only got Gestalt back on the PS3 and Xbox 360, with this being the first time we've gotten an official release of Replicant. In this story, humanity is on the brink of extinction with a disease and strange beasts threatening the world. You play as a young boy who's sworn to his younger sister Yona to find the cure for her disease. One of the main criticisms of the original Nier was its clunky gameplay, but in this remake, gameplay seems to be lifted from Nier Automata with a much more fluid combat system. Millions of fans fell in love with this franchise through Nier Automata, and for those that never experienced this game's story, you should be in for a real treat. One of the most unique looking games on this list is Chris Tales. You can't help but be in awe when you look at this game, as it's hard to tell when the cutscene visuals end and the in-game graphics begin. This love letter to classic JRPGs is all about time travel, allowing you to delve into the past to make decisions that will drastically change the future. Chris Tales also boasts a dynamic strategy turn-based combat system, where synchronizing abilities and mastering timed button presses will be crucial to combat. There's also a demo available right now if you want to get a taste of what's to come when it launches later this year. One of the most unexpected sequel announcements of recent memory, Neo The World Ends With You, is making its way west this summer. After numerous teases and ports, it's great to finally see a follow-up to the original cult classic. Little is known about the story at the time of recording, but here's what little we do know. You play as Rindo, trying to survive and unravel the mystery behind the Deadly Reapers game. From the trailer, it appears we'll be returning to a stylized version of Japan's Shibuya district. The leap to full 3D has been seamless, with Neo The World Ends With You looking stylish and slick as heck. Oh, and before you call this a Persona 5 ripoff, the original World Ends With You released on DS in 2007, so let's stop with this nonsense, alright? Combat looks to be a major improvement from the original with what looks to be some sort of action turn-based hybrid. The original is an absolute classic, and I can't wait to check out what this sequel has in store when it releases this summer. In my opinion, I feel like the Disgaea series has been stale for a long time, but appears to be shaking things up with the upcoming Disgaea 6. It's finally taking the leap to fully 3D character models, and they look fantastic. Characters look so much more expressive and crisp. In Disgaea 6, you play as Zed, another world zombie who, along with his sister, are on the bottom rung of the totem pole. The God of Destruction threatens their way of life, and it's up to Zed to unite a colorful cast of netherworld characters to fight back. The same wacky strategy RPG gameplay the series is known for returns along with a host of new systems. You'll be able to speed up battles, have battles auto-repeat fights that you've already completed, level to over 99 million, yes, really, and much more. For those that love grinding or simply getting a lot of value from their games, Disgaea 6 should keep you plenty busy when it releases on Nintendo Switch this summer. Another surprise sequel announcement coming this summer is Monster Hunter Stories 2. The original was sort of a cult favorite on 3DS, employing a more cartoonish art style and a turn-based combat system. I guess Capcom felt strong enough about this spin-off series to give it a sequel. From what little we know about the story, it appears as if the Rathalos are vacating their habitat in droves, but nobody knows why. I imagine one of the plot points will be discover what's causing this mass exodus. The announcement trailer didn't show much of actual gameplay, so it's hard to say what it'll look like, but I imagine it will retain its Pokemon-inspired take on monster catching and turn-based combat. I never played the original, but I'm excited to check out this sequel when it releases this summer. One of the most exciting games on this list for me has to be Scarlet Nexus. It's a futuristic action RPG with a lot of the same team members that worked on Tales of Asperia. The general premise is there are monsters that fell from the sky known as the Others that are constantly mutating. Combat seems reminiscent of Devil May Cry with intense action and a wide variety of slick abilities. It seems like you'll be able to play a variety of different characters with unique abilities too. One thing that really stands out to me is the game's style. Everything from the art direction to the music just screams cool. It's tentatively scheduled for release this summer, but with everything going on in the world, let's hope Bandai Namco can at least release it by the end of the year. One series I thought was dead and never coming back was Rune Factory, yet here we are in 2021 with a fifth entry coming to Nintendo Switch. In Rune Factory 5, you find yourself in a small, secluded town and are recruited as a peacekeeping ranger. Like in past Rune Factory games, you'll split your time between tending to your farm, socializing with the townsfolk, and fighting off monsters. New to Rune Factory 5 are team-up attacks, in which you and another party member team up for devastating abilities. 5 also gets a nice glow up in the visual department thanks to the Switch's more powerful hardware. 
All in all, this is shaping up to be one of the best entries yet. If you've never played a Rune Factory game before, now's the perfect time to hop on board this amazing series. One game that's been in development hell and will hopefully see a release in 2021 is Digimon Survive. Digimon Survive sees a brand new group of teenagers get lost on a school camping trip, finding themselves transported to a strange new world of monsters and danger. As they fight their way back home through a world of difficult decisions and deadly battles, players' choices throughout the game will impact the evolution of their Digimon and the final ending. Gameplay appears to be split between adventure-style segments where you'll explore and interact with the environment, as well as traditional strategy RPG battles. Despite Digimon Survive being announced years ago, there isn't too much gameplay available or other details known. Hopefully Bandai Namco blows the lid off this one soon with a release date. The second of two Neptunia games on this list releasing in 2021 is Neptunia Reverse. This is an odd one. Basically, it's a remaster of a remaster. And I gotta be honest, from a visual perspective, it looks terrible. If you showed me gameplay, I would have never guessed this was a PS5 game. It looks like a really nice Vita game at best. They are adding some new interface and quality of life updates, but to me this just feels like a really lazy port overall. If you never played the first Hyper Dimension Neptunia game or its remastered re-release, then maybe this re-remastered re-re-release might be for you. Seriously guys, just don't buy this. If you're looking for a JRPG you can play with your friends, then look no further than Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. New Genesis serves as a massive overhaul to Fantasy Star Online 2 with a new visual style, giant open world, and a shift to action combat. To be clear, this isn't an expansion to PSO2, but rather Sega seems to be positioning this as a replacement game as PSO2 is getting pretty old at this point. Aspects that made the original so popular like deep character customization and intense gameplay seem to be here in spades. Oh, one of the most important features that I can't forget to mention, their fingers move. If you love the original PSO2 and are looking for a modern reinvention, the new Genesis should look pretty promising. The PS1 cult classic Saga Frontier returns this year with a remastered re-release. Saga Frontier Remastered will include HD visuals, a speed-up mechanic, as well as new events that weren't in the original release. The story was fairly unique at the time in which you had eight protagonists to choose from whose stories weave together throughout the game. I have to be honest though, I didn't really enjoy this back in the day and I have to imagine it hasn't aged well over time. Also, it has that washed out mobile game visual style that I personally think looks really bad. I feel like this will mostly be aimed at fans of the original and will probably not draw in too many new fans. If you never played Saga Frontier before and have your eyes on this one, definitely go for it, just don't get your expectations up too high. One of the most beloved entries in the Shin Megami Tensei series, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, gets the HD treatment in 2021. After Persona rose in popularity, SMT fans have been shouting for some love and it seems like it's finally coming. I have to say that this is bordering on a remake with how good the HD visual looks in widescreen mode. They look really sharp and crisp. This should serve Nocturne's darker story quite well. If you've never played an SMT game before and are coming from the Persona series, the battle system should look fairly familiar with turn-based combat, a weakness system, and the ability to capture demons. Nocturne was infamous for its difficulty back on the PS2, but this remaster will include a new easy difficulty for those that find the challenge to be a bit too much. I never played this myself back on the PS2, but I'm excited to give it a go when it releases this spring. The SMT love continues in 2021 with a brand new entry in the series, Shin Megami Tensei 5. Unfortunately, we don't know a whole lot about this game other than making some guesses based on the few teaser trailers so far. The story once again seems to be pretty dark and take place in Tokyo. There's flashes of a ruined city, so there could possibly be some sort of apocalyptic event that takes place. There hasn't been any actual gameplay shown, but we can probably safely say that it will be turn-based and involve catching demons in some way. SMT5 has been a long time coming since it was revealed in 2017, and hopefully Atlas can finally deliver the goods later this year. Speaking of long delayed games, hopefully this is finally the year we get to play Tales of Arise. The Tales series has grown a little stale for me over the last few releases, and Arise seems to be upping the ante in every way. With the help of Unreal Engine 4, the visuals look the best they ever have with detailed characters and huge environments to explore. It's hard to really say, but it appears that levels have a semi-open world feel to them with the short bits of combat we've seen so far. As for the story, it appears to be about neighboring planets at odds with one another, with one taking advantage of the other and pillaging resources. The main characters shown so far, a sword user named Alfin and a gun wielder named Shion, look to be teaming up to bring justice to both worlds. This is easily the most excited I've been for a Tales game in a long time, and hopefully we can get a release date really soon. Now if you want to hear about the best JRPGs of last year, be sure to check out my top 5 JRPGs of 2020 video. And if you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more JRPG videos all year. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.